Dear diary. Well, we tried to bowl it, but we are in the playoffs. Keon and Tete and Perry Ng are nearly fit, but not quite there for the first league at home against Norwich, but hopefully will be available for the second league or final if we make it. But unfortunately, Connor Coventry picked up a training injury and is unlikely a feature for the rest of this season. Still, we beat Norwich the only time I've faced them to date, so hopefully we do it again. Make the final and win promotion to the Premier League. Until next time. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 43 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Cardiff City and coming up today it is the playoffs first off we take on Norwich over two legs in the semi-final the first of those is going to be at our home stadium and if we can get through that we take on one of Blackburn or Coventry in the playoff final to try and make our way up to the Premier League so if you're looking forward to this big episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but very little has happened off the back of our last two games of the regular league season in yesterday's episode. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. We nearly bottled things with that 1-0 loss against Reading but thankfully did pick up that 3-0 win against Luton Town and it does mean we have finished the season in fifth place and that sets up a showdown with the team one spot above us on the championship table this season and that is Norwich and as you can see the first league of the other tie has already been played Blackburn who did finish third they hold a 2-0 lead picking up a win there away from home over seventh place Coventry so if we do get past Norwich it already looks like our opposition in that playoff final might be Blackburn, who we have struggled to get over so far, but have decent results against since we have taken charge here at Cardiff City. But Norwich, we did beat them 2-0 the only previous time that we did play them. The former Rangers manager, Giovanni Van Blonckhorst, is in charge, and they will go with a 4-2-3-1. Some decent players at the club. They're the likes of Brandon Williams at right back, and they have Podence at left wing, and also Adam Ida up front as well. So certainly a team that we do need to respect the team who were expected to be in this playoff mix, of course, with Cardiff. We were not expected to be there. We were expected to be mid-table and even lower when we did take these guys over at the start of December when they were one spot away from dropping in to the relegation zone. But the big news since you were last here is that Keon Tete and Perry Ng are nearly back from their injuries, but we're not going to risk them in this first league against Norwich. We might risk a Tete in that second leg if he is close enough because our striker depth isn't really there but the big news Connor Coventry he picked up a hamstring strain in a training session off the back of that win over Luton Town he has gone for 12 days to four weeks he is not going to feature for the rest of the season so what that means is that any Renamota is best suited to that position where Connor Coventry did play as you can see tactical familiarity is a little bit higher than our other option there, which would have been Alex Patterson. So we're going to start him there. Patterson and Simons both on the bench. That is because if we need to make a substitution, we can't always put Renamotta back to right back instead of having someone else on the bench. And of course, Dujon Sterling can cover both of those wing back slots anyway. So I think that bench is quite well balanced. And hopefully we pick up a decent result here in this first league to take to Norwich for that second one. And we can make our way through to that playoff final, I'd like to think we've got a decent chance considering our form that we have had since we have taken over here at Cardiff since we did join in early December. I think we've only lost three or four games since we did take over here. So we have been in very, very good touch and hopefully we can end this good season since we have been in charge with promotion to the Premier League and we'll come back shortly for the first game of hopefully free in today's episode as we take on Norwich in the first leg of the championship playoff semi-final. And here are the team sheets for this first leg. There we are as we ran through before Rinomata does come in for Coventry. But apart from that, 
that is our best 11 that were available to us with those other injuries in particular. Two Keon and Tete and there are Norwich looking pretty similar to what we did see on that squad info page before, albeit a few changes here and there, but it still looks like a pretty strong team. And less than a minute into this one, we do have an early free kick. Erhog High gets his head on the end of that one, puts it over the bar, so an early chance, but it does remain nil all. And just shy of the 15 minute mark, we get our next highlight yet again. We are inside the final third and Cole all there. Nice swinging ball into the mix of it. Gersai's header is saved well there by Vicario for Norwich, albeit not too much power on that one as Gersai did go for placement. Good work there from Ben Hardy to get us back on the counter attack, but the ball does get robbed there of Gersai. They pump this one deep, but thankfully McGuinness is there to win the ball for us. We try and get something going yet again. Down this right-hand side, some good passing, and we eventually find Rowles in a bit of space. Good chance here for Trizoldi, but that is a top save, that from Vicario at close range, hopefully. Trizoldi today puts the ball in the back of the net with that injury to Atete. Otherwise, we might have to rush him back for that second leg. We put that one into the mixer, but Norwich do hit it away. They might get a chance here, potentially, on the counter-attack, but that is a good foul, that one by Joe Rells, he'll probably pick up a yellow card for that, but we don't mind 15 minutes in, and still nil all. And with about 10 minutes to go in this first half, we do get our next highlight, and we do pinch the ball there off Norwich as they do try and play out from the back, so so far these highlights have been in our favour, and now Colwell with a good chance, and yet again, Vicario comes up with a big save here so far, had a very good first half in the first league of this championship playoff semi-final, but we do have a corner, which McGuinness gets his head on the end of, but that one goes over the bar. So, so far, all the action in our favour in terms of highlights, but still locked up at nil all. And that is half time in the first league of this championship playoff semi final. And we've looked pretty good in terms of the highlights that we have seen, albeit in terms of the stats and the XG this game is quite close, but fairly encouraged by what I have seen so far. A few players out there on yellow cards, but both of them are playing quite well and are quite important to us. And also, we do have Urhog Heil on a 6.4, but I think we'll just stick with him for the moment, adjust some opposition instructions, and hopefully we can just give these boys a bit of a rev up in the second half and grab an advantage to take into that second leg away from home. And only a few minutes into the second half, we do have an early highlight here of Froem, but this time it is inside our own half. But Urhog Heil goes on a little bit of an adventure, finds Rowles, and we eventually find some space here down our left-hand side, bit of a mix-up there at the back, and Gullisay from a tight angle, but unfortunately can't hit the target. That was a decent chance, still nil all at the 50-minute mark. And around about the hour mark, it is a free kick here for Norwich City, as Mateju has just picked up a yellow card. Gomez puts this one into the mixer. I think one of the Colwills was involved there. They have the ball very close up. Sergeant there with a shot. Thankfully, it is blocked there by Hardy, and while we are here, it might be a good time for us to make some substitutions and hopefully cut off this highlight just in case Norwich do do something from this corner. So Mateju can come off with that yellow card. Also Urhog Hyde only on a 6.3. Nelson for him. Sterling will come on for Mateju. And also Trizoldi is not playing that well. So I think what we're going to do today is put Galasai up front. He is decent up front as a striker. And Ihataran can go to the right wing. And those are our first three subs. Still nil all with a half hour to go. We'll just confirm those and see if anything does come from the subsequent corner, which Norwich are about to have. And indeed, it does look like we are going to get shown it as Gomez lines this one up. But we do cut it off, albeit now there is one on the other side of the field. And Cole will, will head that one away. Ihataran here tries to put some pressure on Dennis down that right-hand side. And Cole will, will find Sambi Laconga outside of the box. Now Klosterman makes his way inside the final third. Some good position here for Norwich, really, for the first time that we have seen so far in this game. But good work there from Jacqueline. And we might get a chance here on the counter-attack, but a good tackle that from Klosterman. And this highlight does continue as Colwell now has the ball and they get it up around the halfway line through Gomez. But good work there from Ihatalin to get the ball back for us. Starts to go on a run, but does miss out on position. And Dennis now finds some space down this right-hand side, plays that one in for Sambi Laconga. It's blocked there from Rails, but they somehow still keep possession. A hand has got to that, I think. 
by Gay Tampusin, and Aguile puts that one in the back of the net. We're going to demand more, and somehow we are 1 0 behind here despite all our dominance, especially in that first half. But Norwich continued to pile on the pressure. Aguile, indeed, that was a touch from Pusina, one of the defenders, but it still finds its way into the back of the net. And we go 1-0 down at home in the first leg. And with about 10 minutes to go, we do have a late corner in this one. McGuinness gets his head on the end of it. It's saved by Vicario, but this time just pats it down for Ihitalin at the far post. And thankfully, we have grabbed an equaliser here at home. We made one change off the back of that goal, which Norwich did score. We put Colwell on to attack instead of support. But I don't think that had much of an impact from set-piece. Ihitalin puts that one away. And we do grab an equaliser. And while we are here, might be time for us to make our final substitution. Ben Hardy out there only on a 6.4. We can, of course, put Rinamota back to right back. So what I think we are going to do here is bring on Alex Patterson. And we can put Rinamota back to right back. He can go forward into that ball-winning midfield role for these last 10 minutes. As we go in search of a winning goal here at home. One all with 10 minutes left in the first league of this playoff semi-final. And in the 89th minute, we do have a highlight in this one. It is a free kick, albeit deep inside our own half. Can we grab a goal here to give us the advantage going into that away leg? Sterling, who so far has been pretty rubbish off of the bench. I'll tell you what, Norwich going in there with some interesting tackling right on the edge of that box. But that ball put in there has too much on it. And Vicario is able to claim that safely and does roll that one out for Cole. And now Norwich try and get something going here on the counter attack, but thankfully Rinamota is there to tidy things up for us at right back. And now Ihitalin, nice ball over the top here for Ruben Cole. That's a big chance, but yet again, Vicario comes up with a big save and now a corner in the 90th minute. That's a save there from Vicario. Yet again, he is having an absolute blinder, albeit one more corner here, albeit there are five minutes of added time. So plenty of time yet for us to try and grab a winning goal. That ball is played into the mixer. And now Rowles will play this one back for Robinson, who did come off of the bench during that second half. Now McGuinness plays that one in for Ihitalin, finds Rowles in a little bit of space here. He gets brought down, and the referee has given us a penalty, which Sir Hal Gullisai is going to take. What a moment this could be, with injury time having struck here at Cardiff City Stadium. And Vicario has come up with yet another big save. So it is still one all. That was a big chance for us to pinch a winner late in injury time. We do still have a corner, which Rowles is going to put into the mixer. But unfortunately, Norwich do clear their lines. And it looks like that is going to be full time. We do end up with a one all draw. It could have been a lot worse being 1-0 down early in that second half. But thankfully, we came home with a bit of a wet sail, but we definitely should have ended up picking up a 2-1 win from that one, especially when you do look at the XG, albeit that's something that we can work with in that second leg away from home when we do take on Norwich, but not a bad result. Could have been a lot worse going into that away leg, but we'll come back shortly and run you guys through the team sheets for that second leg as we take on Norwich away from home, locked up at one all in this playoff semi-final. And we are back with the team sheets for the second leg of the playoff semi-final. There are Norwich looking pretty similar to what they did look like in that first leg, at least in terms of their shape. A few little changes there in terms of personnel. Atete is back for us on the bench. Also Sterling does start it right back over Hardy, who was very injury prone and tired at the moment. But that is our only change in the starting 11. We get things underway. Still locked up at one all. And only five minutes into this one, we do have an early corner, which Jacqueline puts into the mixer. McGuinness gets his head on the end of that one. It just goes wide. And we are still locked up here, early doors in the second leg. And 20 minutes off the back of that opening highlight. Yet again, we are on the attack here with a throw inside the final third. Colwell finds Gallese, and this time we do beat Vicario in goal. He was brilliant in the first leg. This time he's had a little bit of an error. And thankfully, we do go in front here away from home, because I should have mentioned it earlier. But with us being the lower ranked team in this tie, a draw does mean that Norwich do go through automatically. So we do need to win this second leg. And that goal will get the job done for the moment. 
1 0 up 25 minutes into the second leg. And only a few minutes shy of half time, there is a free kick here for Norwich. There's been a bit of a break since we did grab that early goal to put us in front. We did put both of our defensive midfielders on to defend off the back of that. So hopefully we can hold on for the rest of these 90 minutes. But Williams will play a ball over here looking for Teller. But thankfully McGuinness is there to head that one away. And now Dujon Sterling makes his way down that right hand side. Actually does quite well to keep possession. And so does Renamotta playing that one back to McGuinness and we start to make our way into the Norwich half nice ball here for Trizoldi he tries to beat the goalkeeper who came out just a little bit but that's good work there by one of the Norwich defenders to clear that one away but right before half time we do have one more throw in and Jacqueline is inside the box what can he do from a tight angle sneaks that one inside the far post and right before half time we lead Norwich 2-0 away from home hopefully that's a big enough buff for us to make sure that we do go through to the playoff final. Good week there from Mateju to find his wing partner in Jacqueline. Did think that they could do a bit better in defence, but to be fair, just inside that far post. And that is a brilliant first half from us. We go into the sheds with a 2-0 lead, 3-1 on Edgut. And as you can see, overall playing a lot better than our opposition are, which is pleasing to say away from home it does look like though we are going to be forced into one change at halftime Ruben Colwell was quite tied in between these two games already down to a red heart if a talent can come on for him but very happy with that first half hopefully we can hold on and make a playoff final with a 2-0 lead in the second leg 3-1 up overall only a couple of minutes into the second half we do have an early goal kick here which Pussin will take hopefully Nothing happens here in favour of Norwich. It might be time for us to try and introduce Tete soon because Trisoldi yet again is not playing too well up front on a 6.4 but Potence here does find some space down the left hand side. Sterling nearly gets the ball off him and he is still in position. It's well blocked and we head that one away but apparently there is a penalty. Rouse has put his hands on Tala illegally. That one did look a bit debatable. And Norwich here from the penalty spot will get a chance to grab a goal back. Pussin gets a hand on that. But the ball finds the back of the net there through Emmanuel Dennis. And we might have gifted Norwich away back into this one through that penalty. Pussin very close to making a save. But that makes it 3-2 overall early in the second half. And I think it's definitely time now for Atete to make his way back off of the bench. He can come on for Trizoldi. And hopefully put this one to bed and not get injured, gain some fitness before a hopeful playoff final, which he can feature in. 40 minutes left and we are up by one goal. And only a few minutes off the back of that equaliser to Norwich. We do have a free kick here and make our way into the opposition half. Hopefully we get a chance here for Atete to grab that cushion goal back for us. So it does get headed away. But to Galasai on the edge of the box, we'll play this one in. Iha Talon does quite well to keep that. Rouse with a long shot actually forces a very good save there out of Vicario, albeit he's looked a little bit more shaky today than he did in the first league, but we do have a corner here, which Jacqueline will put into the mix of it. Norwich will head that one away. We get up to the hour mark, still up by a goal. We are going to make one more change while we are here. Dujon Sterling not playing well. Ben Hardy can come on for him as we still hold our one goal lead with 30 minutes left of the semi-final. And only a few minutes off the back of that previous highlight and that substitution. We are back in position yet again, albeit inside of our own half. McGuinness will play this one to Hardy, fresh off of the bench. And we do keep position, but Renamotta there does lose out. And now Norwich do get a chance to do something on the counter-attack. Potence somehow wins the race to that ball. And Dennis finds some space on the right wing. Thunders that bottom left corner. And 20 minutes in the second half is all it has taken for Norwich to grab those two goals back, albeit one of those was from the penalty spot. It did look a little bit dodgy, but we are bottling this somewhat here. After all our good work in that first half, to be fair, not much Pussin can do about that shot from Dennis. Two all, three all overall, and the scoreline does mean at the moment we are going out, so we're going to go a bit more positive again off the back of just trying to shut up shop when we did grab that lead in the first half. And also, we do have Galassay down to a red heart. Robinson can come on for him. And Ihatalan can go out right. 
he can go to the central midfield. And it is our last stoppage, so we may as well make our other substitution as well. I think we will bring on Patterson for Andy Renamota because he has scored some quite good goals during the course of the season that might be needed in these last 25 minutes. All locked up, but due to seeding rules, Norwich will be going through if it does stay this way. Yeah. And just about to enter the last 15 minutes of this game, we've used up all of our substitutions before because we had no more stoppages left. Alex Mateju has picked up a red injury. He cannot continue. We are going to play the latter stages of this one with 10 men. That is not ideal when we do need a goal in the late stages of this game. So it does mean that someone will have to go back to left back who is not used to it. Just debating which one of Jacqueline or Cullen Robinson might be better served. We'll just see who has the better marking attribute. Jacqueline with a 5. Cullen Robinson with a six, so I think Robinson will play left back, Jacqueline's left wing, and will play the rest of this one without an attacking midfielder, but while we are here, we'll go into positive and put a few more players onto attacking duty, and hopefully somehow find a way to grab a goal, which would see us through to the playoff final. And with about five minutes left in this one, Cullen Robinson's now picked up an orange injury, but we can't do much about it, but we are going to do is switch to a higher line, both defensively and attacking, also go wider on attack, and a bit more direct as well, and also tell our guys to be more expressive and see if anything does happen inside these last few minutes as we are down to 10 men thanks to that injury. We'll go on to attacking. Six minutes of added time, and we have a late free kick. A Tete far post will put it away. 21st goal of the season off the bench, and that could be a massive one down to 10 men, which could see us through to the playoff final. We're going to get everyone now on to defend for the last few stages of this one, as many people as we can onto those defensive and support duties. We might also drag those wingers back, even though they're not really suited to playing that far back, but we may as well do it for the last few minutes of this one, especially while we are down to 10 men, thanks to that injury to Mateju. But what a goal that could be down to 10 men, and Keon Tete does pop up with a here at the far post. And is that going to be enough for us to secure this win away from home, which was needed? Otherwise, we would not make our way through to that playoff final. A draw would have been enough for Norwich to go through. We'll also just change a few instructions to make sure we don't blow this late, which hopefully will not be the case. We've gone back to cautious, just slowing everything down and also go a bit more narrow so that we do keep hold of the ball. Also go back to a more standard mid-block defensive line as well. And hopefully that will mean no more highlights in the later stages of this one. But what a goal that was from Atede. We'll also change all of this to the more negative options as well instead of the more counter-pressing options. And now it's time finally for the replay of that big, big goal here at Norwich, which could see us through to the playoff final. It's a free kick and a tete right into that top right corner, pinpoint accuracy, and we go 3-2 up with seconds left in this one now. Hopefully no more highlights, and it looks like we have escaped here with a 3-2 win, and the dream continues. We are through to a playoff final, probably against Blackburn, but the second leg of that one is coming up the day after this game, which is actually quite good because we do get a day's extra rest but thankfully after that good first half we nearly blew it in the second but that injury time goal to Keon Tete when down to 10 men does mean we are through to the playoff final and could find our way into the Premier League for next season so we'll come back shortly and update you guys on who we are playing in that one off the back of a dramatic 3-2 win away from home 4-3 on aggregate over Norwich. And we come back to you a few days prior to that championship playoff final where we are going to take on Blackburn as expected. They did make their way through that semi-final where they were ahead against Coventry. They picked up a 1-0 win in the second legs and then went through quite comfortably 3-0 on aggregate. We did pick up a draw in our very first game and charge against those guys away from home and then came from behind to beat them 2-1 right before we did enter those games a couple of days ago in the FA Cup against Liverpool and against Coventry, so recent form against those guys is not too bad, albeit a quick look at their team. You will see they do have some quite good players, the likes of Ben Brereton-Diaz, the absolute Chilean legend, and they've also got in their books 
the likes of Rian Brewster as well. So it's quite a strong attacking Blackburn lineup, which of all people, Unai Emery does have at his disposal playing a classic English 4 4 2 is the Spaniard. But the other reason we are coming back at this time is that we could be close to having a takeover here at Cardiff City. It's probably good timing for it too, right before we might get promoted, hopefully to the Premier League. Those discussions, which we did find out the two people involved in yesterday, are continuing. And hopefully, there'll be an announcement in the next few days, and we might get a little bit of investment from that as well, albeit it doesn't sound like it is going to be a tycoon takeover. But we are close to a takeover here at Cardiff, and we are about to play Blackburn in the Championship Playoff Final. We'll come back shortly with the team sheets as we take on Blackburn and try and find a place in the Premier League from Wembley. And here are the team sheets for this playoff final. There we are for the first time in quite a while. We are pretty close to full strength. Ben Hardy is back. Keon Atete up front as well. Still Rinomota in there for Coventry. But apart from that, we are at full strength. And there are Blackburn, as mentioned before. That strong front two with Brereton Diaz and Bruce that we need to keep an eye out on. But win this and we go up to the Premier League. And very early on, we do have a throw in here for Blackburn inside the first few minutes. And Brewster tries to play a ball. Over the top, but thankfully that was shielded quite well by one of our defenders. And Pussine does claim that. We'll hoof this deep for Atete. We don't win that in the air. We do get it back there through Joe Rowles. Jacqueline will play a ball forward here for Colwell. Gonna say tight angle. What a start in the playoff final. Garrisay puts that one. Bottom left corner. And two minutes in, we are 1-0 up against Blackburn. What a start. Continuing that momentum from the latter stages. Of that semi against Norwich, lovely ball, this from Colwell. And Gallasay, after missing that penalty in the first league, has found his goal-scoring form off the back of that. We go 1-0 up early in the championship playoff final. And not too long off the back of that opening goal, it is now a goal kick to Blackburn, who look to play out from the back and try and grab an equaliser as soon as they can, albeit good work there from Rinomota, but unfortunately does not win the ball from the Chilean legend, in Brereton Diaz. Now Brewster plays that one back for Hedges. Big chance here for Diaz, but thankfully misses the target and we still hold our 1 0 lead. And about 20 minutes off the back of those first two highlights in this playoff final, we do have our next one. We are on the attack here. We find Galase in some space down that right hand side, albeit play it back into the midfield. And now Rowles finds Mateju down the left. He tries to play a ball into the mix. So there a good chance for a Tete, but unfortunately misses the target this time with his header, and we are still 1-0 up, slightly dominating the stats so far in this one, but now down the other end for a Blackburn corner, just shy of the half hour, mate. We head that one away, Brereton Diaz, back for Hedges, and somehow that one beats Pusine at his near post, and just like that, our lead is gone in this playoff final. It is one all, just shy of the half hour, mark. I thought we dealt with that when McGuinness headed that one away, especially the angle, which Hedges had the shot from. Not sure how that's got through Pacine, but it found the back of the net. One all in the playoff final. And just under 10 minutes shy of half time in this playoff final, we do have a goal kick here. Might be one of the last highlights in this first half as Ben Hardy has picked up a late yellow card in this half as well. And today might be through on goal, tries to rifle that one in the back of the net, but puts too much on it. And it looks like it's going to be 1-0 at half time. And indeed, that is half time in this championship playoff final. We got off to a brilliant start through that Galassay goal, but unfortunately, somehow, he just did equalize at the half hour mark. But overall, it's been a very even game. So I suppose that scoreline is fair. Just a little bit frustrating that we have blown a lead. Yet again, we're going to make one change at half time. Don't like defenders on a yellow card, especially in games like this. A Sterling can come on for Ben Hardy. We'll give the boys a bit of a rev up here because honestly, that first half was only okay. And hopefully, that gives them the motivation they need to grab a winner in the second half. And we can make our way up to the Premier League, locked up at one all. And only a few minutes into the second half is Blackburn here with a thrown, albeit they are down to 10 men with someone off of the field. So hopefully, we can take advantage of this as they do try and play their way out of the back. And they do get the goalkeeper here to play very much as a sweeper keeper, and they are still camped 
inside their own half, maybe waiting for their other player to come back onto the field. But they do find some space here. Taronia plays that one in behind. We clear it away, but can't quite keep it. Brewster does quite well there to take it off of Rouse. Now, Brereton Diaz inside the box plays that one back for Laird. Tavernier with a shot outside the box. It comes off the inside of the post. And Rinamotta just clears that one away. Might actually be a chance here for a counter-attack. Brute Atide lays that one off for Jacques What can he do here? He puts this edge of the box, but Tavernier heads that one away. Mateju will tidy things up. And it's still one all early in the second half. And we've just entered the last half hour of this playoff final. Still locked up at one all. We'll just see if anyone does need to be taken off here. And indeed, Jacques down to a red heart. Callum Robinson can come on for him. Hopefully we grab a winner in this last half hour. And only a few minutes off the back of that most recent substitution, we now have a corner, but we don't get ahead on the end of it. But we do find this ball inside the box and Rails now will try and get us back on the front foot. Sterling off of the bench, tries to size his man up here, does a good job, looks to play that one forward to Gullisse, but pour at the back there from Blackburn. And we try and get a header off, but don't. But Cole does well for us. To keep that ball, rolls off a shot. It's saved there by the Blackburn goalkeeper. We put it back in the mixer. No one can get their head on it for us. But Colwell does still keep possession. And that will go out for a corner. It's a long period here of sustained pressure for us as we are about to enter the last 20 minutes of normal time. In this playoff final, Rolls will put this one into the mixer. Can we find someone near post? We do an Erhog hide. It just goes wide and still locked up at one all. And very shortly off the back of that previous highlight, yet again, we are on the attack. Robinson plays that one to Colwell in the midfield. And Rinamotta, nice ball out there for Mateju. Robinson inside the box will find a Tete. The shot is blocked. That would have been a good chance if the defender was not in the way. Now down the other end, thankfully, we deal with that danger before Brewster can get the ball. And it does look like it will still be one all here as we do enter the last 20 minutes. We'll be a big chance there for Diaz. He puts the ball in the back of the net, but thankfully it is going to be offside. It's so hard to tell now with the assistant referees not putting their flag up, and with 15 minutes left, still locked up here. At one all, and while we are here, might be time for us to make some substitutions. Unfortunately, a Tete down to a red heart, not going that well. We'll see if it works the other way around today and bring on Trisoldi for him. Also, we will bring on Patterson for Joe Rouse because that is our only defensive midfield backup who is decent, I think, who we can bring on. Also, Cole will down to a red heart. Hitalin can come on for him. Those will be all our subs for regular time. Still locked up at one all with 15 minutes left. And we're just entering injury time in this playoff final. There's going to be four minutes of it, but unfortunately, this one is going to go to extra time thanks to that goal at the half hour mark to Hedges. That early goal, unfortunately, did get cancelled out, albeit overall, we are looking like the better team. So hopefully that continues into extra time while we are here. We might make one more change. Just give us nice fresh legs early in this extra time period. We can only bring on one of Nelson or Simons. I think Nelson is the better player on the bench and Mark McGuinness is down to a red heart, so he can come on for him, and hopefully that will just make us a bit more solid at the back with those fresh legs, but we'll get things back underway as we kick off extra time, still locked up here at one all. And we have a very early highlight here in extra time, it's a corner which Patterson puts into the mixer, Niccolo Trizoldi off the bench, it's so similar to a Tete in that second leg versus Norwich, off the back of that, we are going to shut down the houses yet again, albeit this time, we actually have 11 players on the field, so we might not need to go quite so defensive as we did against Norwich. But what a goal that is from the man on loan from Brighton. We grab a goal to put us in front early on here in extra time. And that was the lone highlight in that first half of extra time. So now we are only 15 minutes away from potentially making our way into the Premier League. We did go to a cautious mindset off the back of that goal, but hopefully we hold on here for this last 15 minutes, and we'll make our way up to the Premier League, 2-1 ahead in the playoff final. And we are inside the last five minutes of this one. We have tried to get as many players as we can onto a defensive duty with this one goal lead. We are just into the additional minute of this one. Hopefully, this is just a highlight, which is a pointless one, albeit Blackburn do win the ball back off of that goal kick, but good block there 
I think that was from Gallus. So actually, it might have been Robinson on the other wing. And we are doing well here to just keep the ball with only 30 seconds left. Rinamotta will find Sterling in lots of space. And hopefully now we just hold on to the ball, albeit Gallus I does lose out on possession. And Blackburn might get a late chance here if they do lump it for Buckley. Plays this one over Nelson. Heads it away. Dolan in behind. He beats Pussine. And in the last minute of this one, we might be going to penalties in the playoff final. We probably are. Dolan does a dance. I hate it. We need to go back to what we were doing because it didn't work. Look at all those players on defensive duty. It did not help, unfortunately. Maybe we need to bring those wingers back like we did in that previous game where we did take on Norwich, but I thought with 11 players on the field, we might be okay. Unfortunately, Blackburn do grab a late equaliser, and this one now might be going to penalties because we've just kind of blown it a little bit late there. Complete opposite of what did happen against Norwich. We give the ball away first in this league through Garase. Can't blame Nelson there too much with that header. And Dolan somehow gets in behind Pussin with a bit of an average effort there. It is near post yet again. And they make it 2 all right on the brink of full time in extra time in this playoff final. And I think this one is going to penalties. Indeed it is. I'll just sort out the order and we'll come back and see if we can do it the hard way to make our way up to the Premier League. And we are back having sorted out the penalty order. There it is. It's most of our attacking players first and then our players with higher penalty ratings who are in the back half of the field. So I do think that does look like quite a strong penalty taking lineup. Most of those players in the first five are above 10. So I'd like to think we might have a slight edge there in terms of that. Hopefully Pussin can do a bit better here in the penalty shootout. And he did do during regular time, but to be fair, most of these guys do look quite calm here this penalty shootout, so I think we'll just tell them to relax, and most of them who are still on the field apparently are calm and positive, so we'll see what happens here in this penalty shootout, and Blackburn are the first team who are going to step up, it's Kolak, he sends Pussin the wrong way, puts that bottom left corner, and Blackburn do put their first penalty away, next up for us is Trizoldi, off the back of that goal he did score early in extra time. He puts that one away, albeit the Blackburn goalkeeper to get quite close to it by the look of it. So hopefully that is not a theme and Pussin can come up big for us here. With the second penalty, he goes the right way, but Zizo still enough power to beat him. And it is 2-1. All penalties so far have found the back of the net. Next up, Ihitalin. And he will send the goalkeeper the wrong way. It finds the back of the net. And so far... Some pretty good penalties next up for Blackburn. Is one of their defenders. This could be a chance for us to stop one. He goes the right way again, Pussin, but doesn't quite get to it. So far, Blackburn perfect, and so far, we are perfect. Now, Galase missed the penalty against Norwich in the first league, but this time goes straight down the middle. The goalkeeper goes to the right, and it is free all here as we are three penalties each into this penalty shootout. Next up, Leonard. He steps up for Blackburn yet again. Pussin goes the right way, but doesn't quite get there. And now it gets nervous if we miss one. Patterson is the next up for us. He will send the goalkeeper the wrong way. That one goes bottom left corner. And we are still all locked up in this one as we do go to the last of the selected. Regular penalty takers. Buckley here for Blackburn. He will send Pussin the wrong way. 5-4. It is now must score time for us. And stepping up, it is going to be, I believe, Callum Robinson, the left winger, who did come off of the bench. I think he is nine penalty taking, but hopefully that is enough and can keep us alive. In this penalty shootout, he steps up, does the left winger. He sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Not much power on it, but thankfully finds the back of the net. And we go now to the sixth penalty taker for each team. Aguirre is up for Blackburn. Pussin goes the right way and he might have even got a hand on that but can't keep it from finding the back of the net and yet again must score time for us here hopefully Pussin if we do get through this can make a save next time and Andy Rinamotta is stepping up for us here to try and keep us with a hope of getting promoted to the Premier League he takes it goalkeeper goes right way but too much power 
he shushes the crowd, and next up is the late goal scorer in Dolan for Blackburn. Will he go from hero to zero? No, he won't, because he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And next up for us, our seventh penalty taker is Dujon Sterling. So this is going to be interesting, a player who did come off of the bench at halftime in regular time with Hardy not performing too well. Can he put this one away? The goalkeeper gets a hand on that one. Thankfully, though, still finds the back of the net. Seven all, and this is getting quite deep now. Next up for Blackburn is Travis. Goalkeeper goes the wrong way, Pacine so far. Not having a good day, I think it's fair to say, but can't blame him too much in a penalty shootout. And yet again, we need to score. Hopefully, this is not the case too much more off the back of this penalty. And we can keep the shootout going. Mateju, he's been an absolute worry for us this season. Has not had to be rested too much at all. He steps up. It comes off the post. And we are going to spend another season in the championship because Blackburn score a goal. An injury time of extra time to take it to penalties. And Mateju is the player who can't hold his nerve. It comes off the post. They don't even have to make a save. And we somewhat have bottled that, unfortunately, in extra time after grabbing an early lead there through Trizoldi and also an early lead in regular time through Galassé. And that is, unfortunately, a disappointing way to end the season. It's been such a good season since we have joined Cardiff City. Didn't play badly, but unfortunately, it went to penalties. We did not get the job done, and it does mean we are in the championship yet again next season, albeit, I think, with a full season in charge. We can definitely get promoted and hopefully automatically next season, especially with a bit of transfer work. But we are not going up. We miss out on penalties in the playoff final. 8-7 to Blackburn. So we are back off the back of that playoff final loss on penalties. Don't know whether to laugh or cry after that because that was so, so close to going up to the Premier League at our first time of asking. But thankfully, our transfer budget for next season, a little bit bigger than what I was expecting, albeit still not that big. We have £4.7 million pounds to work with. Our wage budget at £400,000 a week. It sounds good. It's exactly the same as we already have. So I think it's fair to say we will have to shuffle a bit of that transfer budget into the wage budget for next season. But if we are going to make a push for that automatic promotion to the Premier League, which is definitely going to be the aim off the back of what we did do this season, we do have a transfer budget of a couple of million to help us do it. And to wrap up today's episode, it's been a pretty long one, I know, with those three games ending with that defeat in the playoff final, but it is our end of season review, albeit just realised we've only been here for half a season, so it might not be the most useful end of season review that we do get, especially because we didn't actually sign any players on a permanent deal once we did get here. But here is the end of season review in terms of average rating. The best signing was Sir Hal Galassé from Rennes. He did a good job for us with that 7.1 average rating. Also good near the club this season. Jacques and Urkog Hyde, who actually will pick up the signing of the season. Some good work as well from those players. We did bring in on loan halfway through the season. In particular, Ihitalin and Trizoldi for a moment. Looked like he might have got the goal, which did send us up to the Premier League. But in the end, we didn't do a lot of this business transfer-wise, and we sold a few of these players of likes of Jack Simpson. He left the club under our watch. Also, Lewis Thomas to Wimbledon. We had Jake Clark sold, who actually joined the club earlier this season. We actually made a profit on him, which was a little bit surprising. So that was quite a good bit of business for only six months' work. And also, we did get rid of the likes of Taylor Jones and Dylan Phillips as well. So a bit more business done from me there in terms of the outs. But I think most of those the board are fairly happy with, seeing as we did make a profit on those players. And in terms of loans out, we didn't do much of that either. We go forward to the results where we had a bit more of a hand in things. As you can see, on the right-hand side, Cardiff in the championship got off to a dreadful start. We did not take over, remember, until the game against Blackburn on the 9th of December. And from there, look at the form. It was superb of a rough patch there with Sheffield United and Swansea. But off the back of that, a big run of wins. We lost to Crystal Palace and to Reading. 
But apart from that, those were the only four games we actually lost in the championship this season. And of course, technically, we did lose that playoff final as well, albeit it was on penalties. But considering we were in 21st place when we took over, that is one heck of a season, albeit a bit of a bitter ending there with that loss in the playoff final. But to be fair, we did quite well to just make it that far. The FA Cup, we also had a really good run in this competition. We managed all of these games, making our way through to the semi final where we did lose to Liverpool by a scoreline of one goal and nil. So it's fair to say that Wembley was not kind to us this season in the Carabao Cup. They were already knocked out by the time that we did join the club. So no point in looking at that one. The moments to remember, the biggest win was when we were not in charge against Oxford United. Match to remember was on Boxing Day, a 3 0 win away from home over QPR. I think that's one of the first games that we showed you guys once we were in charge here at the club. And the goal of the season from a few episodes ago was from Patterson in a 1 0 win over Southampton. And it was very early on, too, in the second minute. We had Hardy here who was just on the edge of the box, Patterson, with a loose first touch, but did actually set it up for that shot. Rifles at top left corner. Heck of a goal to give us all three points there against then top of the table, Southampton. And can't complain too much about that one being the goal of the season. Since we have been in charge, we go forward to the finances. We don't know much about this because we weren't in charge last season, albeit in terms of the shirt sellers, a little bit surprised that Keon Atete didn't make a late charge in terms of that with his form. Since we joined the club, we go forward to the best 11 for this season, to be fair. Does look like the team that we put out for the most part, albeit we did in the end go towards the Urhog Hyde and McGuinness centre back partnership in terms of average rating. Apparently, Nelson and McGuinness were slightly better, but apart from that, I would go with that best 11 for this season. And Keon Atete was the player with the highest average rating, so I imagine he picked up the player of the season, and indeed that was the case, also picked up young player of the season, and we go down a little bit further. He was the top goal scorer in the league with 20 goals. That must have been prior to that one that he did score against Norwich. In the playoffs, the most assists was Jacalis with 11. And the most player of the matches also did go to Atete with 7. We unfortunately got no competition awards. We would have liked to have fought if we were here all season. We would have been in with a shout for that manager of the season. But we did pick up manager of the month for January and for March. They're not too bad for only a couple of months' work. And over on the right-hand side, some record breakers, albeit not overly significant records there. Just, I think, ones that have popped up because it was our first season in charge at Cardiff City. And we go forward to the overview history in the making. Big power play from us from the middle of the season since we did take charge. But unfortunately, even though we did overachieve, we did not quite make our way up to the Premier League. And we go forward to the dynamic manager timeline. And of course, we did just take over in late December after being at Linfield. So we'll pick things up from where we were at Linfield last season. As you can see, we picked up lots of trophies when we were at Linfield in that first season. That's one of the reasons we did decide to leave because we'd done everything there was to do there in Northern Ireland. We quit on the 7th of December, joined Cardiff. And as you can see, we did sign a few players who are joining us come the start of this season in particular. In Dominic Van Gaal, big upset apparently over Watford in the FA Cup. 200 games managed was in the FA Cup with that 3-1 come from behind late win over Everton. And also we got the likes of Ruben Colwell and Ben Hardy to commit to some long-term contracts here as well. So hopefully they both stick around, albeit Ben Hardy does have a clause four clubs in higher divisions where he can leave for a fee of 14 million. So definitely something now we need to keep an eye out on in the off-season. I was hoping if we got promoted to the Premier League, that would not be an issue. Unfortunately, with that slight bottle job, that is now something we do need to keep an eye out on. But Keon Tete, definitely the player of the club since we did make that move with those 20 goals in the league and also a few others in those cup competitions. And that will wrap up our first season here at Carter C next season. We will have a full season in the championship and hopefully we can make our way up to the Premier League off the back of coming so close after only joining in December. 
And there are the goals for next season. They want us to finish in the top half of the championship and be competitive in the EFL Cup, albeit some of the stuff could change, of course, once that takeover does take place, because so far we are still waiting for that one to come through. But that will do it for this big episode to end this week here of FMOE. A quick reminder, no video tomorrow. I'm going to go enjoy myself and maybe cry a little bit over that penalty shootout loss. But we'll be back at the start of next week with a transfer window roundup and maybe also the first game of the new season here at Cardiff C. But if you enjoyed that long one, where we unfortunately are stuck in the championship for a full season next year, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well until the start of next week for the start of our second season at Cardiff, yet again in the championship. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.